Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me, Bill. Back in October, uh, video 87, I'll put a link up there uh, for you to have a look at. It probably is worth watching that video before this one, as it, bits of it will make a great deal more sense if you've seen that one. Uh, I actually used um, some optoelectronics to turn my oscilloscope into a tachometer so I could measure the speed of a DC motor which I re recovered from some scrap equipment and I'm uh, wanting to repurpose. Now originally when I was doing that I decided to use a, a Hall effect sensor and I was going to somehow attach a, a magnet to the motor so I could uh, measure it using the Hall effect sensor and I ordered a Hall effect sensor from eBay. While it was in transit uh, it occurred to me I could do this optically and that was uh, essentially what the topic of that video was and a couple of days after I'd finished that video the whole effect sensor arrived and I just um, popped it in a drawer and I wasn't going to do very much with it and then I started taking the arrangement of the motor I'd got for the previous video to bits and I thought actually maybe I'll just have a go with this so um, here is the whole effect sensor in question it's about the size of a transistor I've just attached some uh, wires to it just to make it uh, easy to work with um, and so a good bit of learning here for me I'd never really knew very much about Hall effect sensors other than they were devices for detecting magnetism um, but yeah so it's been some some good learning so let's um let's start by having a look at uh, what's in that package Hall effect devices then um, in the case of the one that I'm using which is the uh, U18 uh, which according to the spec sheet is supposed to be uh, capable of a uh, operating up to 120 well minus 20 to 125 centigrade so quite a, a wide temperature operating environment uh, they're about the size of um, a small transistor uh, this is a close-up here and I've just put the leads on just to remind myself what, what the connections are so in that package then uh, we've got more than just a transistor we've got uh, obviously the three connections the positive supply the output and the the ground or negative uh, the three parts of it consist firstly then of the sensor um, which is the uh, shown here as a square box and the Hall effect sensor a bit beyond um, the scope of this video today but essentially a voltage is passed across um, a piece of uh, semiconductor material and the charge carriers uh, move from uh, one side to the other depending on uh, on the polarity and in the presence of a magnetic field uh, some of the charge carriers will be deflected to the sides and uh, a voltage measurement taken at right angles to the um, initial voltage uh, is essentially what the whole voltage actually is that's not a very eloquent explanation I'm going to encourage you to go and have a look at some of the many uh, explanations on the internet um, but essentially it's a magnetometer that's capable of sensing uh, the strength of the field and also um, the direction of the field if necessary uh, the output is as I'm sure you can imagine very small so that's followed by a, a buffer amplifier and then uh, in the case of this device there's a Schmidt trigger which um, essentially I guess um, cleans up the output so it's um, either on or off and if you look carefully at the spec sheet it does give you um, actually very precise points for when it's uh, on or off de uh, depending on the strength of the magnetic field that the sensor is experiencing and then finally there's an output buffer in the shape of a, an NPN transistor right let's have a look at it on the bench okay just the general arrangement first of all then uh, the Hall effect sensor is actually just here on the end of those wires and if you've watched the video about the measuring of the motor speed using optoelectronics you might recognize the the disc with the black portion the marked on it and I've glued uh, a magnet which I extracted from a, uh, a cardboard box uh, a, a case for an old mobile phone um, and I've just got that super glued to the, to the face of the disc so it's very crude but um, uh, it works so Hall effect sensor being supplied by 5 volts then here through the black and the um, red leads and the yellow lead is the output now I'll just leave that home over as you can see I've got this on its uh, most sensitive setting uh, because the output from that Hall effect sensor is indeed very small so I'll just connect that up 
Um, so that's just connecting directly to the output and I guess that wave there is just noise. Um, and if I now move the magnet so that it passes in front of the sensor, as you can see, um, that noise vanishes. Now I think what we're seeing there is there's an output, whereas there, there isn't an output. Oh, that sounds a bit crazy. This isn't the most sensitive oscilloscope in the world. Um, so no output and output. Now that starts to make more sense if you um, start this spinning, excuse the beep, um, because now we can actually see uh, there's a bit of a pattern there and probably the easiest way to show you that is to just pause the trace can understand the scope struggling to trigger off that but you see we've got that shape there we've got it again there there and there and so what you've got there is essentially where the um, magnet is passing the sensor um, and again as I said this is a uh, not the most sensitive oscilloscope in the world but if I now speed up the voltage Uh, we can now see again. I'll just I'll just pause that again, so you can see there. Yeah, we've got magnet, no magnet, magnet, no magnet, magnet. So I think that's probably um, reasonable to say that yeah, it works, but the output is incredibly small. I have to say that when I've put this onto my uh, Siglent scope, it isn't actually um, very much more distinct. Um, to be fair, so what we need is some kind of um, circuit that will amplify the output of the sensors to make it useful so there's two versions that we're going to look at today a transistor version and an integrated circuit version so first of all let's start by looking at the schematic diagram okay first of all we'll have a look at the transistor version of a circuit to um, get a meaningful output from the Hall effect sensor so we take the output from pin 3 uh, into the base of a NPN transistor and then the output of that transistor is taken into the base of a second NPN transistor which is driving uh, an LED through a current limiting resistor and if you're familiar with um, transistor amplification the two transistors here are connected as a uh, as common emitter which means of course that the collector of um, the first transistor um, which I'm going to call test point one will actually be out of phase with the input by 180 degrees and when we measure the out voltage across the second transistor at test point two we should see um, a 180 degree phase change so hopefully the um, LED uh, being switched on uh, will be when the output of the Hall effect sensor goes high right let's have a look at that on the bench here's the um, circuit we've just looked at uh, set up on the breadboard here's a close-up for you two transistors and the various biasing components and then the led at the output the green and the um, yellow wires here uh, sorry orange wires here are uh, connected to the scope probes and um, the green one is test point one on the previous circuit diagram that's the yellow trace and uh, when we eventually get there the other trace will be um, test point two so output of the sensor comes along this green wire here don't worry about this bit of circuitry that's for later uh, and feeds into the base of uh, transistor one so currently the magnet uh, isn't near the sensor and so hopefully it's going to be switched off and as we bring the magnet round slowly see it just coming around here the LED lights and notice the trace has jumped up as well as um, that transistor has switched on and it's sufficiently high gain in this stage that we're not getting that same uh, jittery response that we were from the sensor on its own. So yep, yeah. on, off, on, off, yeah. So if we now start the motor at a relatively slow speed, we're getting that, um, that pulsing every time the uh, magnet passes the sensor and that's the output from test point one. Let's now switch on channel two. and we've got that on five volts per division at the moment so if we just increase that a little bit i guess the the point i'm trying to make here is that um uh, so now they're both on one volt per division we've obviously got a 
DC offset going on as you can see so uh, let's just pause that so you can make some sense of it so this is the test point one that yellow pulse there and what we've got here is um, uh, an out of phase signal essentially uh, as the uh, output from TR2 is 180 degrees um, out of phase so let's let that run again and if we now just need to hold this because the magnet unbalances the motor if we now increase the speed we obviously get a different frequency there and if I just alter the time base for you it would be good if I pressed it in the right direction uh, and we can continue to increase the speed in fact we can increase the speed to the point at which the LED uh, I can tell it's not 100% on but uh, we've got um, 44 Hertz there according to the, the scope recorded on uh, channel 1 so I don't want to lose that right now because it will um, vibrate off the scale but if you look at the previous video about optoelectronics, electronics multiplying that by 60 would give us uh, the revolutions per minute um, so that's the transistor version of the circuit now let's have a look at um, another version using an op amp onto the uh, op amp version of uh, a driver then for the hall effect sensor and we've got here um, an op amp in this case i'm using a tl072 as it was one that i just happened to have in my uh, parts box and the output of the hall effect sensor of pin 3 is going straight into the inverting input of the op amp and then the output on pin 1 there uh, is driving an LED again through a current limiting resistor to ground and uh, we've got uh, a little bit of feedback control uh, for the uh, rather large gain of an op amp in the shape of the 100k resistor feeding back to the positive input now the 10k potentiometer um, was in there to allow me to um, adjust uh, the the voltage on um, the positive or the, the non-inverting input of the op amp and I've discovered that if I set it pretty much midway um, that works as well as anything uh, so two 4.7k resistors uh, would have uh, worked equally well there so why am I feeding into the negative uh, side of the op amp well that's because uh, I want it to um, flash in the same way as the transistor version did so um, so it looks similar uh, and doing it that way means that the LED will light when the uh, hall effect sensor is um, sending a, an output signal. If I put it into the positive input and put that bridge on the, the negative input, it would just simply uh, flash in the opposite direction, that's all. So you can do either. Um, so that's the op-amp version, let's have a look at that on the bench. OK, on to the op-amp version of the circuit then. Uh, which is uh, built on this bit of the breadboard. Here's the close-up of the circuit. You can see the IC there, a couple of supply rails with the two little yellow connectors between the supply rails. And then we've just got the um, 100K uh, resistor, which is the, the feedback control, and the potentiometer offers in the bias voltage, and then down at the bottom right is the current limiting resistor for the LED. So. Um, Back to the bench here, there she is, just all set up, output from the um, hall effect sensor goes into pin uh, 2 of the IC, the, non -in the inverting input, and currently the magnet isn't near the sensor, so LED not lit and trace on zero, move it there, LED lights and you can see the trace has now gone up, and it won't come as too much of a surprise to you that when I switch on the power supply the LED flashes and we get the, the pulses there. And as we increase the speed, the pulses should get closer together. Um, just go up a, a little bit more without the unbalanced uh, state of the, and you can see it, maybe just about see it vibrating there. Um, that, that's 24 hertz. So uh, just to convince ourselves we know what we're doing. Um, 24 times 60 is about 1440 RPM um, and the sensor is um, 
picking that up rather nicely. So that's um, the IC version of the circuit. In some senses, it's actually easier because um, there's a lot less components involved, and I've still got a completely unused um, op amp on this chip, which could be used for something else in another part of a circuit. Well hopefully, like me, you've um, learnt a little bit about Hall Effect sensors and how you might use them. Um, I certainly enjoyed uh, learning all about it and discovering um, the, the uses and the pitfalls of the sensor. So it's been good from that point of view. And as I've said in previous videos, um, I'd encourage you to get some of this kit. It isn't expensive. Get get some of this kit and play with it and you know actually learn some some practical electronics it's actually really interesting and quite captivating and uh, I'm learning that it isn't as complicated and difficult as uh, as maybe it might first appear so I would encourage you to have a go um, and yet again we found another use um, for an oscilloscope um, for some transistors and an op amp so uh, can't be good thanks very much for watching hope you found it useful if you have please click the thumbs up uh, it costs nothing to click the subscribe button and it would help me if you did so if you're not a subscriber pl please subscribe and uh, that'll help me and hopefully we'll see you in future videos thanks very much